Hey there guys, happy Friday. Thanks for coming in. Thanks replay viewers for watching and thanks YouTube viewers for coming in as well. If you'd like to participate in the chat live with me here on Periscope, just download the app to your phone and search for Penguin and Fish. Uh, I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. We're gonna continue on block 44 of the Splendid Sampler here. Uh, we're going to be doing more embroidery tonight, so that's the plan guys. All right, I'm going to flip you flip you around here Hi, happy Friday all. Thanks so much for coming in. Hope you're having a lovely evening tonight uh, I've been watching <laughs> I've been working and watching Gilmore Girls for a good half of the day, so I have complete Gilmore Girls on the brain. <laughs> but we're going to be working on block 44 some more. We've done, uh, we did this little embroidery here and uh, last night, and we are going to work from there. So we'll just continue these little leaves here, and then we'll probably jump to this flower. And I think we'll be lucky if we finish that much tonight. So. We'll see how it goes, guys. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery and a fabric designer as well, and I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. We've been working through the Splendid Sampler quilt along. You can find out more info at thesplendidsampler.com. We're on block 44 of 100, and we get a new block coming up on Sunday, so we have two more days, tonight and tomorrow, to work on this some more. So let me know what you guys are working on. Oh, I'm so happy you're here too. Thanks for coming in. I know, almost halfway. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? All right, I'm going to flip you around. All right. I know, it's crazy. It went fast. And I know we talked about this a little, uh, a little the other night because I was um, freaked out at about 15. I, I had laid them all out. I'm going to just adjust you guys a hair here. I laid all the blocks out and... Uh, <laughs> basically panicked a little bit. I mean, but my brain... Oh, we flipped already? All right. Sometimes, um, for YouTube viewers, it's kind of funny that I keep going up and down, but on Periscope, where I'm recording this originally, it, it, uh, it flips all of a sudden. But yeah, so I, uh, I, uh, I could feel the panic in my body, but my brain was like, well, that's stupid feeling. I'm already committed to this. You're doing fine. It's, it's fun. Uh, but the idea of a big project, like my body recognized it and it, and it freaked out. So that was, that was just kind of odd. <laughs> feeling a lot better now. It, it's, uh, I mean, you know, I'm loving this project, but I'm, I don't do big projects like this very often. I'm going to scooch this over. So what we're embroidering is a little bit more in the middle. It'll make it easier for it not to be so close to the to the hoop, even though we are going over our fabric solve here a little bit, but it shouldn't, shouldn't matter so much. But yeah, it's been super fun. I, I've just been loving the process so far, and you know what? It, it's just been fun hanging out with you guys working on it, and uh, I've just learned a ton, and I know my sewing, and um, you know, all the tidbits and tips and tricks are, I, I'm getting better at those and just getting better at sewing in general, which I had a lot of work to do when we started here. I had a good base level of quilt stuff, but I feel like I've definitely jumped into that intermediate level at least a little bit. So I, I feel good about that. <laughs> Still in the like zero level when it comes to quilting, the actual quilting, like when you sandwich the quilt together, which we'll eventually get to that with this project. But you know, there's room to learn there too. Good thing about doing it together, it will get finished exactly. See, that's the thing. It's totally, it's totally you guys that are keeping me doing this for sure. Because otherwise, it would be just too big of a project, and I'd freak out. All right, so last night we, we, um, I'm doing two strands of this metallic floss. Yeah, accountability, exactly. I'm doing two strands of this metallic floss, and last night I doubled it up and had, like, the needle on the end, 
like folded, folded in half kind of. Tonight I'm going to cut two pieces and start them in the same direction. So I'm not going to start where I ended up here. I'm going to start at the beginning because I'm hoping uh, it will it will twist differently and we'll, we'll see how it goes. Will you continue with this after the sampler? Yes, I will for sure continue with this after the Splendid Sampler was done. I actually was doing these periscopes for a couple months before the Splendid Sampler started. Um, just a lot of various craft things. So embroidery, and we did do some sewing, and uh, some mending, and uh, a bunch of kind of uh, different things, which I, which I love. I just love doing all, all crafting. Uh, so that's, that's kind of what I was doing before the Splendid Sampler. And that's what I'd like to still be doing. I, I'd like to be playing with different crafts and trying different things. Oh, even painted and, and stuff like that. I'd like to do more of that again. Um, but the Splendid Sampler, it just is kind of working that I get done with a block and then the next block is released. Or, or you know, I have all my unfinished blocks yet too. So the Splendid Sampler is just kind of taken over for the time being. But, yep, I will definitely continue this post Splendid Sampler. And I'm hoping that includes however the heck we stitch this quilt together and, um, and quilt it and stuff. Uh, my mom and I all have already, my mom's doing the Splendid Sampler too, and we've already basically determined that we're going to be doing that together. <laughs> so we can, we can test layouts of both of ours and um, just decide what we should do with each quilt. Like should, and they're different. They're, they're going to look completely different. You love the free motion quilting. My mom's really good at, at that. Um, I don't know. I'm hoping to maybe get a little bit better at that through this, at um, free motion quilting through this process. But I don't know. I'm a little scared for this quilt to be the practice of that. I may just keep it simple for this quilt and then have that be like a project afterwards just do another like a smaller quilt maybe even taking some of these blocks that I really like doing and um, making a small quilt and have maybe that be my my little test test um, test free motion quilting but I don't know I'm a little scared about doing it for this one you're gonna hand quilt since I use beads and ribbon flowers oh that's fun see that's that's my other alternative is is hand quilting. And I've hand, I've hand quilted a big quilt before. I mean, in a really kind of rough style, not like pretty little hand quilt quilting things, more like just big stitches, big rows of running stitch. So that would be an option for me too in theory, but I'm hoping to avoid that and just do the um, stitching in the ditch. I think that's the best I can, the best I'll probably do for this. Ooh, I forgot to keep these all separated. There we go. The first one was a queen. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I've only ever hand quilted just in rows with like pearl cotton floss, just going, just a running stitch like in and out. Uh, well, I guess that's quilting, but just big, big, um, big rows with, with pearl cotton floss. So not all that delicate, lots of stitches, uh, quilting. I haven't done that kind of hand quilting, which I would love to, to try one of these days. I would love to actually do a, a whole cloth quilt, you know, a, a quilt that's just all, all like white muslin or something, you know, and then uh, stitch that all by hand, I think, in intricate designs and stuff. I think that would be a huge, interesting project. But that that's a big, scary project that I will uh, I'll just wait a little while before playing around with that. That one, I'll, I'll for sure probably take on a smaller project instead of just jumping into something like that. A hoop, I've quilted one by machine. It was hand-pieced until recently. Oh, that's cool. So you're finishing, finishing up a project, finishing up a quilt. That is a big accomplishment for sure. Yeah, it's the, the quilting, that's kind of my barrier in the whole quilt 
process at this point. Uh, like I like doing bindings and I like uh, piecing and, and that sort of thing. But the actual quilting together, that's kind of kind of where I don't know, like I, I can only do very limited stuff. So I kind of, um, like, like I have a project right now, for example, uh, my jean quilt that I haven't quilted yet, just because I'm kind of at a stall. Yes, UFOs. I think my jean quilt will be stitched in the ditch somehow, but the jeans are so thick that I think I need to do a test on, like, I think I need to actually make a smaller tiny version of the quilt. I have some jean strips left over. So I don't know, that's a, that's a stalled project, but it's stalled because of the quilting. Yeah, I like assessing my uh, unfinished projects every once in a while, or unfinished objects, my UFOs. But yeah, there's, there's some, actually, oh, I don't have it here, but my, my pencil case, I don't know, sometimes I'll bring, bring my colored pencils out and it's in that weird crocheted thing. That was a quilt, or not a quilt, a blanket that I started crocheting when I was super little and uh, I wasn't doing it right, I noticed, uh, once I picked it up again. But it was still cute the way it was, it just wasn't how it was intended, so I turned it into the little cup holder thing instead of doing a whole quilt. I'm doing two strands, but I'm using kind of a weird floss. I'm using this Cosmo Sparkle. Uh, it's, it's by Cosmo or Lycian, and it's called Sparkle Metallic. I think it's got like metal with a little cotton, like a metal filament with some cotton in, so it's got like this pretty sparkle. It's, this is the blue version of it, it comes in different colors. So it's different than a normal six weights or a six strand embroidery floss. So when I say when I say two strands, it's actually a little uh, a little thicker than if it was two strands of the six strand embroidery floss. It's probably more like four strands, I'd say. I know I'm trying to punch through my my UFOs this year a little bit, even though I'm still still adding projects. But I kind of I think that's a good balance. Like I like I like knowing I like finishing projects that I've started, and I like having an agenda of finishing projects. Like okay, I need to I need to know what I uh, need to do yet. And oh, what learning. Uh, but I also don't not allow new projects. So a lot of people are like, I can only, I can only do, I can only do my unfinished projects and stuff like that. But for me, I think it's good to always allow yourself to do something new. As long as you know you're working on your unfinished ones, uh, I think it's good to do new stuff because that's where like the innovation and uh, the excitement comes and you don't want to, I mean, there might be really something there that you don't want to miss. Um, so I think it's good to do the new projects just to, to grow and, and, uh, and play and that sort of thing. So I, I, I like that. I like actively trying to finish my unfinished ones. Um, but, but I allow myself to do new ones too. Yeah, the ones with deadlines have to get done. Yeah, I mean, and sometimes you do have to just hunker down and do it. And, you know, sometimes you need to finish all the things so you, you get just in the unfinished object mode. And yes, many different styles and, and designs for the mood. I think that's so important. I actually, I actually wrote a blog article about this that I, I choose projects, like my unfinished projects and stuff, based on mood and just crafts in general based on mood and I have them available. And so, you know, 
sometimes I actively have unfinished projects. Like I always actively have an unfinished knitting or crochet project. Or if I don't have one, I, I start a new one. Because knitting and crochet is kind of my... It's the end of the world, everything's going to hell, and I need to just sit in my chair and chill and regroup and relax. And that's what does it, is the knitting and crochet. That is my, I need to not be stressed right now. <laughs> and that's, that's my, uh, that's where knitting and crochet comes. So I always have one of those projects, and I just love doing it anyway. It's, it's not my disaster. Um, project, I mean, it is my, like, disaster project, but it's also an actual just, I want to just relax and have fun and chill, so I'll still use knitting for that. It's not just all disaster, but that is, that's my go-to knitting and crochet. But yeah, sometimes, you know, I get really excited about a new technique or something, or a new medium that just looks so awesome and I need to try it, and that's when I'll start a new project. Oh, I think I forgot the little dots here. I did. We have to go back up and do the dots. Uh, but yeah, some and then sometimes I just want to clean up because um, cleaning up just feels gets me like regrouped. And a lot of times that cleaning up is assessing all the unfinished projects. And um, if there's some that you know, like if all I need is a binding on a quilt. I'll just finish it. Or if all I need is to do something, I'll just finish it. And, uh, you know, sometimes the fastest way to finish a project that's completely legitimate is to just stop it. And that's actually a good feeling. It, it actually, like, it's a huge decision to just be like, eh, you know what, I'm just gonna ditch this project. I'm gonna just put the fabric in my scrap bin or, or frog the yarn, you know, pull it all out or whatever, and that's just what it's gonna be. Yeah, when I know I won't finish something, that's what I do. I, I just acknowledge it and be like, you know what, I'm just not gonna do this. Or if I have a friend um, that I know really loves something or another, then uh, um, I'll give it to them or something. But yeah, it actually... If you've ever just decided, you know what, I'm going to stop this project, it's actually very close to the same feeling of actually going through and finishing it. Like, if you just know that this is just not for me anymore, um, then, and you get rid of it, it, it feels almost just as good. Like, it, it feels like that relief that it's off your plate and everything. So it's just kind of fun. It's not hanging over your head anymore. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, sometimes I will um, just put projects away for a period of time and then an interest for it comes up again. Like I was working on that English paper piece thing. I, I think I showed it to you guys a while ago, but it was kind of like the star or like the, the diamonds uh, with some squares and triangles and stuff that I was making out of old shirts. Once we started doing the English paper piecing here, I was kind of thinking that it'd be fun to pick that up again and see if I learn to like it again. So that one, that one I've saved and just haven't worked on it in years. And you know what? It's just becoming okay with that too. But yeah, there is definitely that feeling of like, oh my God, I need to get organized. I need to finish all these things. And then when I feel like that, I see what's undone, and I do the ones that can get finished the fastest. Oh, you saw the Nitty Kitty posted! Oh, cute. thanks so much! I'm, I'm glad you you liked it. Yeah, I finally I finally finished those in little in kitty embroideries and sent it off. Oh, thanks, Susan. It's um, yep. All all my fabric is is organic, actually. I'm not sure, like, with this next collection, the Safari Suite 2, there's some plush, uh, like, plush fleecy dots. There's a, a plush fleecy dot line um, that I did, and I'm not sure if that's organic, but all the cotton, the, you know, normal quilting weight cotton is, is organic, and it's actually uh, relatively in inexpensive for organic fabric, too. It's, it's closer to the normal priced fabric, so... People like that. 
But yeah, it's great. We make a ton of baby blankets out of it. Or my mom does, and I help. <laughs> A sneak peek soon. So you can actually, well, yeah, you know what? I do have strike offs. So maybe I'll, I'll gather the strike offs together. The strike offs are kind of like printer proofs from the manufacturer. So that can kind of give a sense. It won't show everything perfectly, but I can kind of, I can show you it. Yeah, it, it feels great. The fabric, it's got, got a really nice feel. Um, so yeah, I could show some of that tomorrow. Otherwise, you can you can see like a little bit of it on the Clothworks website if you go to designers and, and then Alyssa Thomas. Am I Penguin and Fish? I think it's Alyssa Thomas of Penguin and Fish actually is what it says. And then it'll show the lines that they're currently selling. And it's the my new lines are the Safari Suite 2, which is basically an update of my original line that I did with them, which was like 10 collections ago, which is kind of crazy. Something like 10 collections, 10 or 11 collections ago. Then I also have this cute coordinating dots that are nice fillers and um, then these kind of fleecy, bigger, bigger dots. So it's kind of like a collection and a couple mini dot collections which I'm excited to see. So I don't actually get actual fabric until all the stores get fabric. So when I get it, that's when, that's like when your local shop will have it and stuff too, if they get it. Yeah, so then right when I get it, I um, cut it into fat quarter bundles and then uh, that's when I send the email out that it's available. So I'll be, uh, I think it's going to be November-ish is what it sounds like when it'll be available. So in November sometime, well that's good, it's right before Christmas, so if you, if you need a Christmas present that's fabric, <laughs> then uh, I get the fabric I think sometime in November. It'll probably be late November. I, I have no idea, I'm not sure. But, it, but it's ordered. I got... The entire collection and the dots, both collections of the dots, and um, I can't wait to see it in real life. It's it's much different when you get it on the bolts versus just seeing the little fabric-y strike-offs and stuff, because a lot of times the pieces are really small, or sometimes I don't even get all of the bits. So the first time I really see it is when, when it's shipped, really. But yeah, I can, tomorrow I will grab some of the strike-offs and I can for sure share, share those with you. All right, we just have these two little dots to go. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, I mean, now that they're selling it, I can, I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to show it for real. <laughs> All right, this is, did I get a funny loop in here? No. I just didn't cut cut my pieces evenly. One of these one of these is way shorter than the other, and I think I'm gonna trim it so I don't accidentally mess it up later. It's kind of fraying a little bit. You know what? I'm not sure this is that much better than just folding it in half. So I think I'm gonna fold it in half just so I don't have these ends up here, so I can just pull into one thing because that's I think gonna be going to be easier. Alright, that's being difficult. I'm going to do the French knots down here. It's so much easier to do French knots to just lay it on a table and do it. And then you can hold it again when you're holding the knot to pull it through. I was just trying to do it without sending it on the table just so I could stay in kind of close up by the camera, but it's so much easier to just lay it down. So we'll just do this last one here. And then we got flower number one done. I think I'm going to actually get new thread to start the next, the next one because I have, I don't have enough floss to get me very far. Um, especially since I have to jump over here somewhere. So I think I, I'm just gonna, uh, weave in, weave in this floss and then start fresh here.
So that went pretty quick. That went a little faster than I thought it would tonight. So we might get that flower done and maybe a little bit more. I don't know. We'll see. Although there's a lot to that flower. So the flower number two. We'll probably just get, get to that. Well, that means we get to start the little bird and the, the other flower, the last flower, tomorrow. So that'll be kind of fun. Maybe we'll start with the little birdie. Or we'll probably start with the, we'll probably start, probably start here and then we'll work our way this way. Like when we get here, maybe we'll go into the bird and then continue down here. I, I'm not sure yet. I don't have a, a road map for that yet. Did I go back and forth three times? One, two, three, I think I did. All right, let's trim that. All right, so here we are. This is flower number one. And it, it's it's hard to see on, on this fabric selfie, which is kind of a bummer because I won't be able to really see what this is gonna look like till I'm done. But, you know, we can get kind of a sense, you know, here's, here's the back. It's just a little lighter than the right side of the fabric, but that's kind of fun. It's gonna be like this little kind of subtle, sparkly, sparkly thing. I think it'll be fun. That's kind of the neat part of Fabrisolvi too, if you look at it that way, is that you get like a big reveal when you're done, which is kind of fun. So all right, this time I'm gonna double it up. Still seems like we have a lot on here. I was wondering, oh, maybe we don't, I don't know. I was thinking maybe I would accidentally, well not accidentally, I was seeing if I would be able to use up this floss. <laughs> I want. I was wondering if just one spool of that floss would um, get used up for this whole thing. So we might actually do that. So if that's the case, we're gonna randomly jump to a different color of floss, but that's okay too. I don't know. We'll see how we do. Maybe I'll save the bird for last, just in case we do run out of that. Then we'll at least get like the flower in, and then the the bird can be maybe a different sparkle floss and, and the stars or something. So I think maybe that's my new strategy, just in case, because that that would be a bummer to, you know, run out of floss and only have like a leaf to go or something, you know? That'd be a weird thing to to end on with a different color. But if the bird was a different color, that'd be kind of cute. So we'll see. I think that I think that's decided. I'll do the bird last just in case I need a new color. All right, let's, let's, I guess, start with an away knot again, just because we're starting a whole new area. We don't have anywhere to weave it in without making a, you know what? I'm going to just leap. I'm going to, I'm going to not do the away knot. I'm going to weave it into this leaf here. And then I'm going to just make the small jump to one of these little lazy daisies. So we'll start with these lazy daisies just because it's really close to here and this is a small jump. And then we'll just go into these leaves. Then maybe up here. I don't know. I don't know how I'll get all around there yet. But yeah, because it's a little easier to weave in and it, it saves a little bit of thread versus the way knot. Now I really only use the way knot when I'm start fresh or I don't have anything to weave it in. But here I can I can get it started here just fine. There we go. So we've been eating zucchini from our garden, which has been so fun, and the tomatoes tomatoes are there and I can't wait to pick them. They're still green though, but I am, I'm super excited about that. This little, these little flowers remind me of it. We've been eating a lot of zucchini for dinner. <laughs> but I think we got them all picked now and now we gotta wait for some of the smaller ones. Oh, and our acorn squash. There's one tiny little, 
Uh, little acorn squash growing on one of them, one of the vines, or one of the plants, so I'm excited for that too. Oh, we flipped. All right, I will take care of that in a second. know that flipped us back around and I think we're ready to get started here. All right. Let's jump to the closest little lazy daisy. So this is, yep. All right. So this is, these are teeny tiny lazy daisy stitches versus the big ones that we did up here. So we're Kind of making this loop. We picked our first tomato. It took forever to ripen. Oh, that's exciting. You do eat it right off the uh, right off the vine. I think we were talking about that a bit the other day. That's the best. Fresh tomatoes off the sunshiny vine. All right, this is like a two-hand deal or three-hand deal to playing with this floss, but oh well. Maybe it is getting a little more twisted this way, although we didn't have any wacky stitches like this either. Doing those leaves. A volunteer tomato plant? What's that? One that came up on its own? Oh, really? For funny. Wow, that sounds just fine. A magic bonus tomato plant. Did you have any of those giant horn tomato caterpillars? No, that sounds scary. Not so far. I don't know. I don't know if we have those in, in Minnesota here. That sounds freaky. All right, maybe this is working not not as well as doing the strands in the same direction. I might switch back on my next next strand. Let's do the thing where we go down and up right away. Oh, in Florida, Florida they gobbled up your plants. Ugh, that sucks. I'm sorry about that. No, we have some moths that are starting to eat our kale and that sort of thing, so we gotta go to Menards and get some um, of that white fabric to to kind of um, to keep them out. We just haven't gotten to it yet. Ugh, they just sound gross. Giant caterpillars. Lard. Uh, we did have grubs though in in the garden last year, like when we were when we dug up the garden to make the garden, and um, at the end of the year and stuff, there was a bunch of really big, gross grubs in it. So I'm hoping that we don't have those, but I'm sure we do. I'm hoping I don't see them. How about that? <laughs> That'd be nice. All right, done with those little lazy daisies. So now for these kind of thicker areas, uh, Gail Pan, who's the designer, um, she suggested doing them first in backstitch and then going back into um, it and doing more backstitches to kind of fill it in. So it's just like a pile of backstitches. So I think that'd be fun. I know too bad that the rabbits don't eat the grubs and, you know, the, uh, the moths and stuff. They should eat all those things and leave the kale. All right, so luckily this, this thread, this doubling up of the uh, metallic floss has been uh, just, it's really thick. So I don't think it's gonna take much to fill in the leaves once we get them 
so that's good. Hmm. This is a little more tangly than before though, so I think we will go back to just cutting two pieces in the same direction. We'll go on the bottom side first. Yeah, that's it. Oh, all right, I can see carrots coming up and and uh, we're growing celery too. I think that might take a lot longer. But it's been so nice out. Um, I think it's washable. I know it can get wet, so I think it's okay. I would probably have to check the label again. Um, I'm thinking at this point I'm just gonna deal with it because I'm already this far. But yeah, I, I don't think I don't think there really should be a problem. I mean, maybe if you, I mean, I don't know this for sure, but maybe if it's just like left out soaking in water, I mean, maybe that would be a problem, but I don't know. It's gonna dry so fast and stuff. I don't, I don't think it would rust or anything like that. All right, so now I'm gonna kinda, I'm gonna go around this top edge and then we'll go back in the middle. What about ironing? It should be fine. And I'll, I'll be ironing it. I mean, the real test is I'll, I'm gonna iron it once I take the Fabricelby off. I'm gonna iron it like right away. So we can see then how it's affected, but I'm thinking it should be just fine. This particular, like with Cosmo stuff, I mean, I think that it's made to be able to do these things. Like for general crafting and all that, it's not like specialty, you know, metallic stuff for couching down metal and, and all that. It, it's different than that. I, I'm thinking it's, it was designed to be washable. Sometimes I feel like, and uh, I love Lucy watching this. <laughs> Barbecue breaks, tablet, <laughs> so far, buddy. All right, I think, I don't know. I'm kind of thinking we might only need like one little row in there, but I guess two rows might be a little a little bit better. Um, I'm not sure this is how I normally would have done this. I think I would have probably done the lower row and then just done a row right next to it and right next to it and right next to it until I got up to this upper row. But uh, we're gonna do it this way. This is how they kind of have in the, in the instructions. So we're already doing it. I think I'm probably gonna get two rows out of here. I think we could probably get away with one, but Let's just do the two, just to really make sure that that flower or that leaf is, is filled in. So I'm just doing more back stitches right on the inside, which is kind of a neat way to, to fill things. A little different than satin stitching or something like that. Did you see the ones that had lots of applique? Oh yeah, some had applique like this little bit and all the little leaves were applique and the petals and then they still had embroidery in and all that. Um, they're really cute actually. I mean, for me, I, I guess I'm not as comfortable with applique. Like that just sounds like a big project to me. And you know what, maybe, maybe if I didn't have all my unfinished blocks, something like that would be fun, but Right now, I just kind of need to chill and do my nice one color embroidery and uh, get it done that way, something I'm comfortable with. And, um, you know, I got, you know, I haven't appliqued a single piece of that bunny applique yet. Like I need, I need days and I have the Dresden block 
that hasn't nothing's been applicated down yet for that either. So I have I don't even I don't need to add to my applicated list at this point is, is what I'm trying to say. I, I got I got applique up the wazoo to do basically. So I mean we're gonna have to have a applique day and frankly we're gonna have to have a paper piecing day and a and by day I mean like an eight hour like periscope again sort of thing. Um, I'm gonna need a paper pacing day, an applique day, and an embroidery day, probably. The embroidery day, I have a little less to do, but huh, actually not really, that, that nature's, I have nature's walk and um, that garden, the one that with the X, I got, you know, that we did all the little French knots on the other day, that one I got a pile to do yet, like over half. Oh, you've never done embroidery before, and you're you're doing it. Oh, that's awesome! See, that's that's the best thing, honestly. One of the best things about the Splendid Sampler is that it touches on so many techniques that everyone, even if you've been quilting for fifty years, sort of thing, you might not know how to English paper piece, or you might not know how to embroider and stuff. Um, so uh, there's just lots of opportunity to try new things and learn new things, even if you're, you know, a pro. So that's, that's been really neat. And you can actively try new things. Like I've been trying to, you know, I, I haven't, I, I didn't do much applique before this. I mean, not, not intense applique. And so I've been trying to learn a bunch of different styles of applique during this process too. Are the pots applique? Oh, they're not pots, actually. They're, they're the, there's these cute little uh, bobbins, uh, and or spools. I guess they're called spools, right? So little spools, and those are applique. This one is applique with uh, three different pieces of fabric. These are one piece of fabric in that funny shape, but then with embroidery stitches going across. So those will applique. And, you know, I could have done the applique first, that would have been just fine, but, I don't know, I wanted to, I wanted to embroider, I didn't want to applique yet, so, so I decided to do the embroidery first, and, and I just thought it'd be easier, if I did the embroidery, it'd be easier to just place my appliques underneath versus placing those first and then trying to get the embroidery in the right spot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That they're not on the fabric selby because I um, because they're going to be applique. So I, I cut it off just so I would use less less fabric selby basically. That was my reasoning behind that. What was the name of the other floss? The silver. Uh, it's still by the same brand. It's it's Cosmo. Cosmo Embroidery Floss, which is a part of Lycian. Uh, the, the super silvery stuff is Nishi Kiito. So all those letters that you hear are in it. So like N-I-S-H-I, uh, K-I-Kiito. I think there's another I and then T-O. <laughs> Let me see, I think I have the paper here. Oops. All right, I got it written down here. So this is this is that super silvery stuff. So the, the sparkle is this stuff. It's kind of what I'm using. This has a fabric filament in it. Let's get it in focus a little bit more. This is the sparkle. This is the Nishikito. This feels like actual metal. It moves a little bit more like metal, even though it's still completely stitchable. But this is a little bit more malleable. But this just is so shiny and looks like real perfect metal when you stitch it. So it's just fun. I really, I really like playing with this. Uh, but I thought I'd try this this time. So this is the Nishikito, and this is the Sparkle. So here's. Here's some info on that if you wanted to take a screen grab or something. So Nishikito and Sparkle. But yeah, it, it's fun to play around with. 
for sure. And I haven't used the sparkle very much just because I'm in love with the, the Nishiki Ito. But uh, I thought, you know, here's a chance for me to play with the sparkle a little bit more. This this project with little little blue. I'm using the blue version of it for this. But yep, those are the different flosses that I'm using here. I'm just using the one one floss, but I used uh, the Nishiki Ito a lot in, in other blocks. This is the first time I'm using this. I think this is only the second time I'm ever using this the sparkle. It's kind of fun. I'm excited to see what this one looks like when we're done. Now this dark blue, I think it'll be pretty. Does DMC make dull and shiny thread? Um Dull and shiny thread. Their thread's pretty shiny in general. Like their their normal six strand embroidery floss. It's a nice, it's got a sheen to it versus, I mean, you know, if you're comparing it to like the cheap stuff that you can get in a bag for like $5 for like, you know, 80, 80 skeins or whatever, that, that cheap stuff like, like Prism or, or whatever it is, that is a clear difference. You can see that DMC is definitely shinier um, than that stuff. I don't, you know, I've compared it to Lysine, or to, um, yeah, to, to Cosmo embroidery floss and stuff before, and it seems the same. Oh, this, this is, this is that sparkle, so this is definitely shinier. Or do you mean just my other stuff that I embroider? That's, that's pretty much for the most part, DMC. Not this, but you're regular. No, that's, that's, I'm, I'm using DMC for the most part. Every once in a while, it'll be the cheap stuff, just because I have a mix of that in my bin. Oh, it might just be the video. That could be. Yeah, no, no, I'm using, I, I, I use a lot of DMC in it, and it's, it's got that sheen. And I've, I've come kind of compared it a little bit to other floss as far as sheen, other brands, and I don't really see that much of a difference, personally. So, I mean, they all do a good job in their sheeniness. Oh, that's why you bought it, because of the, the sheen. I still think, I mean, I've tried several brands of floss, and I mean, like, you know, Cosmo is very beautiful, like, they got oodles of colors, and that's what I'm actually putting on spools and stuff right now, um, so I'm excited to start stitching with that, but I think as far as all the stuff I've tried, DMC still does a really good job at, oh, what's the way to say it, just this, it's like durability. So like uh, sometimes with other brands of frost, floss, like I've noticed it with, with Cosmo that if I have a really long strand of floss and I'm going in and out of the fabric, every time it goes in and out of the fabric, it rubs on the thread, right? And uh, on some, some uh, brands, sometimes you can see that it's rubbing, like it starts to just get fuzzy and fray a little bit. And... Uh, and uh, DMC, I never r have that problem like other brands, even fancy brands. Fancy brands are great on the color, and they're fun to use. Um, definitely, as, I mean, but DMC has tons of colors, too. So, I mean, DMC is fine. But, I mean, for colors, you're going to get an, enough colors. I mean, if you want to get really all crazy, then, then there's lots of other brands that, that use that have lots more colors and play around with that a little bit more, but, um, I don't know. Yeah, workhorse. DMC is just, oh, you know what? I totally didn't do the top of this leaf, but it's going to work out perfect because then I'm going to end up back in the center. <laughs> After you ran Sierra's, it distorts and doesn't look good. The DMC? 
That's interesting. I'll have to pay attention to that next time I'm, I'm using it. I don't know. I'm a fan. Oh, the fabric selby. So, so the, your thread gets stretched out because of the fabric selby? Is, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, I, I think DMC is still my, my go-to. Oh, it distorts. Um, have you tried ironing it right after you take the Fabricelvi off? I mean, that's kind of what, I, what I've been doing, and I don't know, I feel like it works pretty well. With the Fabricelvi, you do really need to make sure that you are going straight down with your needle and coming up straight, because if you go at an angle, um, you know, you're going in a little farther to the right in the Fabricelvi before you hit your fabric, you know, so it's not as accurate. So uh, you really have to be accurate with your, you know, going straight down uh, to make sure that you're going in the same hole as that you just stitched and, and all that. So. I know that that's, that can be a factor. All right, so we're doing this other little leaf. Yeah, and I had to tighten the stitches. Oh, wow, and had to glue the stitches on the back. Oh man, that's, that, yeah, that seems like a lot. And that's after it was dry? Yeah, it sounds like you have leeway to, to pull a little um, more taut as you as you stitch, if that's if that's the case. Huh. I'll have to pay attention to that a little bit more when I stitch and, and see if I can think of something. Every once in a while I'll have to pull a, a the back a little just to kind of move the stitches around a little bit. So so I like the placement of them a little bit more. I don't let it worry me too much though either. I mean the more hands-on feel the better to me I guess. I mean, I do like being accurate, accurate and shooting for accuracy and all that, but, you know, I don't want it completely to look like a machine did it either. We have had a big lazy daisies that move <laughs> because you're losing an entire layer when it dissolves. Yeah, exactly. So you can pull it a little tighter because you are losing a slight thickness. I had one fabric that shrunk a lot when I soaked it. Oh no, that's a bummer. That's why a lot of people like like um, pre-washing their fabrics. I just kind of wing it <laughs> and hope for the best usually, I guess. Uh, I think a lot of times when you're using like a consistent, you know, new, new um, quilting weight fabric, usually, you know, like good stuff, uh, Oh, I think you can get one more little stitch in here. Then I think you're you're gonna be okay. Like everything might shrink at the same pace. But yeah, I mean, if you have one thing pre-wash, then the general rule is you need to pre-wash everything. But yeah, I am I am an avoider of the pre-washing, mostly because I'm lazy, I suppose. And I'm usually I'm usually okay with things not turning out perfect. I'm I'm more like, man, okay, fine. But yeah, I suppose if for some reason, like if I was doing some really, really fancy quilt, like it's not like I actually do this, but um, if I had a client, for example, and I was making them a giant, king size 
wedding quilt or something that was all embroidered, I'd probably pre-wash the fabric <laughs> just to make sure. You know what I mean? But for my own stuff, I'm just kind of like, whatever. I'm gonna just do two stitches for this. I like the way that it puckers after it's completed. I do too! That's, uh, my mom and I have talked about that too. That's kind of our, our favorite look is when, um, when you, you wash a quilt and then it gets all fluffy and used, that pretty used look to it. All right, I think I'm going to start with this little X in the middle. Then I'm going to do the running stitch that goes all the way around and then I might be out of floss. <laughs> The garden path block shrink. Oh no! Going to add a border. Yeah, that's a good idea. Just just add a little border. Luckily, there's a whole quilt to this thing, so I mean, one little thing going wrong, I think it's okay. We might get a little bit of the rest of this circle in. But I think it will most likely be a tomorrow thing so we'll we'll do the outside yeah oh see there you go it's making that's that's the perfect way to look at it you learn from all of those bits you improve and learn by doing that's what i think and making mistakes those are just all learning things you keep telling yourself it will blend it will blend it will blend, that's for sure. It will. That's what I keep telling myself when I use just like wacky colors that I didn't want my quilt to look like, but it's all gonna blend together. And you can remember that time when you made the quilt and it shrunk up and you had to add that border and man, wasn't that a bummer, but now it's a story. <laughs> it made it something that you worked on. And then your grandkids can be like, this is where grandma shrunk it on accident and had to add a border. And that'll be their favorite, favorite block out of the whole thing. Alright. Uh-oh, I'm stuck. I got a knot. There we go. Your people outside. I think the neighbors are have some people over. I heard her dog barking next door to us, which I haven't heard in a long time, and I love when when our neighbor's dog barks. It's a little uh a a little itty bitty beagle but like an old beagle, so all it, it doesn't bark, it just goes a roo. <laughs> I, I call it a roo, just because that's the noise it makes, but it just, that's all the only sound it makes. And I think it only does it when it sees another dog walking by the tiny little fence, uh, which it can barely look out, so it's just so funny. And I think it's inside most of the time, too. Alright, I have a Enough thread to get started on this little loop. Yeah, we'll just we'll just start. If the fabric was too wrinkled from holding the hoop, can I iron the fabrisolvy? I would not iron the fabrisolvy. Cause if there's if you if there's any steam or any little drop of water, it's gonna turn to goo, so I would, um, I would definitely not do that. I would, uh, I would wait till you're finished. Oh, <laughs> I would wait till you're finished. I wouldn't worry about the creases. Like, when you're, when you're, after you're done stitching for the night or the evening, take off the hoop, and that will help let some wrinkles just kind of relax themselves. Uh, and I I would do that every time you embroider. When you're done embroidering for that session, take it out of the hoop. Uh, but then um, 
then I would just worry about the wrinkles later. Like, you're going to get the whole thing wet anyway when you take off the Faber Selfie, so that will kind of take care of your wrinkles, and you're going to press it right away, probably. Or that that's what I usually do. I press it right away after the Faber Selfie's out. But yeah, so I, I accidentally... I had so much Faber Selfie, so I, um... I, once it got a little bit wet, I, I took it off and just set it on my ironing board, and now I have, like, this spot on my ironing board that's like this crust of Faber Selfie that, you know, I, I'm gonna have to soak somehow to get out or I don't know. So yeah, I would definitely not, I would err on the side of not getting your Faber Selfie close to something that holds water and steam and just to be sure. Just, it, it's probably fine, but scares me a little bit. And, you know, you don't want to accidentally wreck your iron. I mean, that's that's the big, big reason. Who cares about, you know, well, it would suck to ruin an embroidery or something, too, but it, it would super suck to ruin a nice iron. I'm sure it wouldn't ruin the iron. You'd probably have to get goo off of it somehow. I think we might... Oh, man, I don't know. I think I might be one stitch off. You did, but if I accident, it was okay, but never on purpose. Okay, good. That's, that's glad that it was fine. All right, just two more stitches. I think we can do it. I'm going to barely have enough thread. I don't know if I'm going to be able to weave this in very well, but, but the flower will be done with just enough thread. Oh, I love when that happens. So here we go. Here is that second little flower. So we finished. We did finish that tonight. I wasn't sure if we'd if we'd get that far. Um, but yeah. So I'm gonna just attempt to weave in the end. And tomorrow we have a whole fresh flower to start. Are you doing something different tonight? The thread isn't tangling as much. Um, it wasn't tangling as much towards the end. Uh, once I only had about you know this much that I was working with. But towards the beginning, it was it was pretty tangly. Still, um, I think I think the trick is just keeping the thread that's going in away from the thread that's going out, which is tough when you have such a long strand. I mean, it, it'd probably be better if I didn't use so so long of strands. Like, it'd be better to just use like you know twenty inches or something instead of like I don't know thirty six or whatever I'm using. I don't I don't know how much I'm using. But, I don't know, I, I like using long threads. It's just, uh, it's just keeping, keeping it away, like what you're putting in to what you're um, coming out. If you keep those separate, then I think it's, it's not so bad. It just is a little goofy at the beginning. But I don't know. Or this is the fourth, fourth strand that we've done so far, and maybe I'm just getting the hang of it a little bit. That could be too. Getting the hang of this, this thread, how to manage it. Alrighty, get rid of that. So I had plenty to weave that in yet, and there we go, number two. Man, I, I really, I wish you could take off the Faber Selvi as you went, and I mean, you could if this was a terrible, um, you know, if it wasn't the wash away kind, if it was the, the kind that tears away, but I think that pulls too much on your stitches compared to the Faber Selvi, so I don't, I don't use that tear away kind as much anymore. But if it was the tearaway kind, I could be kind of tearing this as I go. But ah well, we're gonna just have to wait till we have the whole thing finished. Uh, but here we're kind of getting a sense of what it might look like, which will be fun. So I'm gonna just take this off of the hoop for the night and I'll flip you around and we'll get going on that other flower tomorrow. We have one more day before, before New Black Day. So that, that'll be good. I like when uh, I like when we have these sessions that we can just sit and embroider. I don't have to set up but the machine. I don't have to get all the tools out. That's kind of why I like embroidery too. You just need this tiny little bit and then you can work anywhere. There's no setup so I'm digging it. It's relaxing. It's relaxing to throw these big embroidered things in every once once in a while in between all the sewing. So there we go. And you can kind of see wherever wherever the design is disappearing because the colors looks like the Faber-Solvay, that's, 
that's how far we are. So the undisappeared part, we still gotta go. So, all right, guys, I'm gonna flip you around. Hey there, thanks again for coming in tonight. Here we are. Zoop. So I like uh, showing the size. So it's still, still a ways to go, but you know, again, it, it ends up being like these itty bitty blocks that are just so fun. So, okay, this will be up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. Uh, once we're done here, if you wanted to go watch it again to um, just get some techniques or something, we did talk a little bit more in depth about the embroidery and, and the stitches and all that yesterday in, in the last, the start of the first video for this, this project. So um, if you're wondering about the stitches or how to start, that might be a little bit better. But yeah, thanks again for hanging out tonight. Thanks, Susan. Nice chatting with you again tonight. And I will see you guys tomorrow on Saturday. Have a great, have a great start to your weekend. <laughs> Good night, guys.